Tennessee's Wild Side, broadcast for nearly two decades, was originally created through a vision of the Jackson Foundation. The Foundation remains a supportive partner in the mission to educate viewers about wildlife, natural resources, and opportunities for outdoor adventure. Wildside is produced by Rockwater TV with support from Tennessee State Parks, where you can discover our state's diverse heritage through spectacular landscapes, family-friendly recreation, and affordable lodging. Tennessee State Parks, fun and adventure naturally. And with support from the Tennessee Department of Agriculture, promoting wise uses of Tennessee's agricultural and forest resources to develop economic opportunities and to ensure safe and dependable food, fuel, and fiber for all citizens. Lake sturgeon can get really big and live a really long time. They can grow as long as eight or nine feet, weigh up to 300 pounds, and live as long as 150 years. That's only if they survive. Lake sturgeon are endangered in Tennessee. But over the past two decades, more than 225,000 of the fish have been stocked in the Cumberland and Tennessee rivers. And as Dakota Castile shows us, it's kind of a big deal. It's a landmark moment in the preservation of a prehistoric fish. And to celebrate it, kids in Kingston, Tennessee are helping release these peculiar looking creatures into the wild. They said they were endangered, so I just thought it was kind of cool to release an endangered species into the water so they could try to thrive again. We've all heard of catch and release, but the 1,000 sturgeon that will soon be swimming to newfound freedom were actually caught hours earlier in a research laboratory. More than 100 miles away, scientists at the Tennessee Aquarium Research Institute in Chattanooga spent the morning preparing the sturgeon for a road trip. We are devoted to working to conserve the biodiversity of the native region, especially in Tennessee and the surrounding states in the southeast. They're very, very labor intensive. They have to eat constantly, it seems like. Um, we feed them what we call blood worms. May not sound that appetizing to you, but uh, the surgeon love them. All this effort is to restore an ecologically important species. Lake sturgeon nearly met their demise in the 1970s from overfishing and water quality changes dams created. Sturgeon are extremely sensitive to environmental stress. If sturgeon are struggling to survive, that's a natural indicator that something is wrong with the water. For the first time, we are trying to put them back into the rivers. Um, now that dams have, they've changed the way that they function. So now the sturgeon are able to survive the conditions. The fish that we have, they were hatched in May of this year. And so they're about three, four, or five months old when we do release them. They usually get to be about six inches in that time period, um, which is really not all that big for a fish that can grow to be nine feet long. The sturgeon, they grow at different rates and some get bigger than others a lot faster. So we um, kind of stagger the release based on when the individuals are ready, um, when they're a good enough size that we think that they can escape um, a high risk of predation. Fishing for sturgeon here. <laughs> Um, we're taking them out today for a release. Packing them about 60 a bucket. We are finished with packing. We're gonna load them up on the truck and get going. We pump pure oxygen in there so that, you know, as they're riding down the road, that oxygen can diffuse into the water and keep our fish alive. A sample group of juveniles will sometimes be tagged to help these conservationists learn more about the sturgeon's travels. It helps us determine where they were stopped. While it's maybe sad to see them leave the hatchery, you know, this is really what it's all about. These juvenile lake sturgeon raised at the Tennessee Aquariums Conservation Institute will be taken to the Clinch River in Kingston, Tennessee, where they will be released and eventually might swim back downstream past this location. Packed in coolers and ready to go, the crew gives the fish a small ice bath before the longer portion of the ride began. The ice is an extra safety precaution to prevent the fish from overheating on the long trip. Before long, 
We reach the destination, but something interesting is going on. We are hosting our second annual Muir Fest here in Kingston, Tennessee. We tried this last year to commemorate the 150th anniversary of John Muir walking through Kingston. John Muir is noted as being the grandfather of the national parks. He was a naturalist, traveler, author, Scotsman to the core. He basically walked uh, across our country several different times. But one of the things that's notable for our city and the city of Kingston was he did come through here and he did mention it within his book. He actually would spend the night in cemeteries because he was worried about getting robbed and most people don't hang out in cemeteries at night. So he actually stayed at Bethel Cemetery right up here on top of the hill in Kingston, Tennessee. I can't make you Music, food, kayaking, and of course, the Sturgeon release are among many of the activities going on today. For the last 20 years, they've been releasing sturgeon into the Clinch River to try to reestablish that species in our waterway. And we thought, what a better day to do that release than on John Muir Festival Day. It's just a really neat way to get kids really interactive and hands-on into uh, reestablishing the species into our river. They gave us the net with a sturgeon in it, and they told us that we had to go out deep into the water so then they could get released. We let the kids get uh, as involved as possible. They they get the sturgeon into a, some type of little minnow net and actually go down on the water and can actually put their hands on them and lead them into the water and hopefully the sturgeon will sw swim outward and not inward, which sometimes happens. With net in hand, children begin releasing these amazing creatures back into ancestral waters. This is the oddest looking fish most of these kids have ever seen fish they don't typically see. Most of them have probably seen tons of bass and bluegill and all kinds of catfish and stuff out of our lakes, but they don't really see sturgeon very often, so uh, they're pretty interesting looking fish. The kids get a real kick out of that. More than 100 people take part in the release. For most, it's an opportunity to have a little fun in the water, but they also learn a little something. A lot of folks don't even know they're in the water uh, or, or the, the efforts to re-establish them. So it's an educational uh, aspect to it. Uh, it's a really good partnership with the Tennessee Aquarium, and I think it makes people more aware of the species and, and, and what it does and what it, how it helps our ecology and our waterway. If we don't conserve the animals and the other species on this planet, then one day they won't be around. I'm Dakota Castile on the Wild Side. Our website explains what to do should you happen to catch a lake sturgeon while fishing. Tennessee's Wild Side, broadcast for nearly two decades, was originally created through a vision of the Jackson Foundation. The foundation remains a supportive partner in the mission to educate viewers about wildlife, natural resources, and opportunities for outdoor adventure. Wildside is produced by Rockwater TV with support from Tennessee State Parks, where you can discover our state's diverse heritage through spectacular landscapes, family friendly recreation, and affordable lodging. Tennessee State Parks, fun and adventure naturally. And with support from the Tennessee Department of Agriculture, promoting wise uses of Tennessee's agricultural and forest resources to develop economic opportunities and to ensure safe and dependable food, fuel, and fiber for all citizens.